Hi, it's Jane Blundell. I originally made this video a few years ago without any soundtrack and a number of people have requested a little bit more information. So here it is, the long version, with a little bit more information. This is the rich green gold made with PY129 and it's very much a yellow green. It's the sort of colour that you might use when you want to show the, the colour of sunlight going through foliage that gorgeous golden yellow, golden green glow. I quite like this pigment as a possible lemon or cool or not warm yellow. It's not one I use a lot, but it is rather beautiful if you're going to have a larger palette of colours. The second one is Sap Green. So this is the original version, which was made with PO49 and PG7. PO49 isn't available anymore, but the new version is very similar and it's a beautiful, usable Sap Green hue. I like Sap Green as a general foliage and botanical kind of colour. I find that even though I can mix thousands of greens with the colours in my palette, Having convenience greens can be convenient, and this is one that I use a lot. So it's made out of two colours that I always had in a basic palette, quinacridone gold and phthalo green, and that's the blue shade version. But this particular version can be really useful if you're doing a botanical subject or if you're doing foliage. And it gives a lovely yellowish shade of green for foliage. Green Appetite Genuine is one of the Primatec colours. It is really lovely. It has a little bit of a look of sap green when you put it on light. And as you can see, I always dampen the square first and so that you can see how the colours move on the damp paper. And then as it goes darker, it's a bit more like under sea green, which we'll see as well. So it has real versatility. You can use it watered down or quite diluted for one effect and richer and stronger for a quite different effect. So this is ground up, semi-precious stones. And as this settles, the bright sap green colour will creep out as it gently granulates and dries. Undersea green is the next one. And this is another one that was originally made with the PO49. That was the original Quadacridone Gold. And it's now a two pigment mix. But once again, the colours are very similar. So this is another convenience colour. And for those of us in Australia, this is a fantastic colour for, for gum trees. But it also really works in many parts of the world as a more distant sort of foliage green. So sap green and undersea green work incredibly well together. And most people have a warm yellow and a, an ultramarine in their palette. So it's going to be harmonious. It's a little bit more olivey and it's great as a receding green, or for greater depth, or a little bit more shadow. It's a granulating colour because of the ultramarine. And that can give you some nice effects when you're painting with it. I always use two water containers at least. These ones these have three, which is really useful. One for dirty water, one for clean water, and then sort of a one for a spare. You'll see that the dirty water does get really quite dirty. This is Jadeite Genuine. So this has the sort of look of a phthalo green, but it's more liftable and it's granulating. So it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. And once again, it has two sort of feels to it. It has the more phthalo green look when you use it diluted. And then when you go thicker, it goes into more of a perylene green, which we'll see later. And it's granulating. So it's an alternate to phthalo green if you want something that is powerful but not as staining. Next is Thalo Green Blue Shade. So this is the version that leans towards the, the blues as opposed to towards the yellows. There is also a yellow shade. I don't find that quite as easy 
um, to use or quite as useful. So this blue shade gives an amazing mixing colour. I would really use it on its own, but as a mixing green, it's absolutely in, invaluable. It's a very staining colour, it's non-granulating, and it's got tiny, tiny little particles, so it will um, really, really work into the paper, which is what makes it so staining. Caroline Green is actually a black pigment, so it's made with PB31. Now that seems a little strange in a way, but it is very much a beautiful green, and it's a green that sits on the blue side, so that's considered to be cool, but I think it's more useful to think about the bias. So this is a, a blue leaning green, whereas the rich green gold is very much a yellow leaning green. This is gorgeous for a shadow green and for the, the depth in, in a landscape. I use it a lot. You can mix a hue that's similar, but once again, this is convenient. And so if you want to have more colours in your palette, some of which are ready-made mixes, this is one that I use a lot. The idea of this video wasn't to show every green available. It was really to show the ones that I particularly enjoy or find something interesting about. There are so many different greens, so I wanted to just focus on a few. Serpentine Genuine is another Primatech colour, and it always reminds me of a sort of a grassy meadow. It's very granulating, and as it dries, little specks of brown show through. It's very, very beautiful. It comes from a stone from Australia. I don't use it often, but there are times when, as, a, as an extra, it's, it's a very useful one. But you could see you could use it instead of sap green, or you could use it instead of rich green gold, or it might be one that you don't find useful. Viridian, I've deliberately done under phthalo green because it's a pigment that is very similar in hue, so it's very similar in colour, but much, much softer, softer and gentler. It's also non-staining unlike phthalo green and it's granulating so it gives a variation of this very useful mixing color however this one is one that might be a bit less threatening i don't use it as much as phthalo green because often what i want with phthalo green is the ability to mix rich darks and viridian won't do that it's just not powerful enough it'll make darks but not the rich darks and blacks that you can make with phthalo green but if you want a liftable green, Viridian could be a good one to start with. Zyozite Genuine is a very, very granulating, almost black. It's quite beautiful. It has, it doesn't have a strong green look to it, but it's really a beautiful pigment. I sometimes use it with pebbles and stones and rocks. And Dioxide Genuine is a little closer to what Phthalo Green yellow shade would look like, which is a BG36, uh, only this is a more granulating version and a brighter green colour. This isn't a colour that I've used a lot, but many people do. The last one is Chromium Green Oxide, which is a colour that I have almost never used, but it always intrigues me. This is a, one of the very few opaque pigments in watercolour, so this can be completely opaque, it will cover a black line. It's one that is really quite lovely diluted, but it's not one I've found a, a use for. But I wanted to show it here because there are just, there just aren't many opaque pigments.
So let's focus on greens. Just a few of the Daniel Smith colours that I've been enjoying. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> 